All right, we're back. Circling Back Podcast, coming to you live from Wash Media Headquarters in Austin, Texas. My name's Will DeFries to my left. David, Mr. Chicago Dog Rough. Doing a Gladiator 2, huh? Yeah. Do we need a yeah. Gladiator 2? We, we wouldn't need it if it was a bootleg cast, but we have a great <laughs> cast for this movie. I mean, it's here, tell me if you know any of these names. I'm not as familiar. Pedro Pascal. Denzel Washington. Good work. Connie Nielsen. When a movie is that highly regarded, like by everyone, they know that they have they have to really come through. So I have, my hopes are high. I think they're going to do a good job because they, they can't afford not to. I, you know I think I mean? it's going to be good. It's got to like, be. Like redoing Top Gun, for example. The, that You know, looking well, back they, on that, not that not great, but. What? No, that was a worthy. That was a worthy sequel, dude. That was so good. That was a great sequel. About, Speak up, Randy. Go back and rewatch it. I mean, is there Pile is on. there any other cast mem- members at all? Who's who am I missing? What is Sweeney's in it or something? What are no, you Paul about? Mescal. He's doing the baby. I girl said Pedro doll. Pascal. Is that a different person? Yeah, there's two baby girls yeah. going to be in that movie. Yeah, Pedro's the rare old man uh, baby girl. Oh, you guys know what we're talking about, right? Andrew for, Scott for sure. is uh, on the watch list, though. No, he's, he's pretty control. much in for me at this point. We'll talk more about that no, later. Gladiator 2 will be good. I mean, Denzel's not signing on unless it's a good script. Yeah. At this, this point in his career, like, he didn't have to do this shit. I don't know much about Connie's work, but I'm willing to learn about it just based on uh, her inclusion in this movie alone. She's Danish, and she's 5'10". She's made I, out of pastries. I love a good Danish, man. I don't even know what a Danish is. If I walked up to a... a bakery right now and i had to pick out the danish in the case i'm not getting there i think it's got a little of the uh like the jelly stuff with it okay am i wrong it's like it looks like in the middle is like a dollop of either like cream or yeah uh, okay yeah so there's a dollop it's not encased i don't think it's encased i never freaked with toaster strudels and i know that i was in the the rare minority of that no you were you were in good company i didn't think they were that great they They were were. way better than pop tarts they used to call me the dollop llama I would legit Why? go in there and just squeeze just the, the frosting into the mouth and call it a day. Okay, that's one way to to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't really mess with toaster strudels. As wild as I got was a pop tart. Oh, pop tarts go so hard, man. Mm. It's been a minute. I almost bought some for the office the other day, but they didn't have uh, s'more, so I was like, nah. Do you go? You go toasted or just room temp on the on them bitches? It just depends how I'm feeling. Right. Don't worry about it. Right. Hey, it's speaking of question. s'mores, um, there's a pretty famous Sandlot scene. I don't know if you guys noticed in the bathroom of Sluggers, they're they're gonna have the cast of the Sandlot there, and they had a little poster up in the bathroom. I saw it every time I peed, which was frequently. That's exciting. Yeah. And um, yeah, they're gonna and they had like a then and now, so it had their character and then like them now. And they're gonna get the redheaded guy that we saw at Carve. Oh, interesting. Speaking wow. of s'mores, there's a pretty popular blog post too on Washtag. <laughs> I still call them s'mores. I, I don't. It just sounds like you're doing too much. Then why is there an apostrophe in the word? I don't know. If they're called s'mores, you're supposed to, you wouldn't to, need the apostrophe. It's supposed to run together, though. You know? But it's like, give me some more. No, I get it. It's one of the most iconic mashups in food history. Are we talking prison back shots at all? Can you intro me? Like, <laughs> Dylan Shivery. Jeez, man. Hey, uh, first of all, happy to be here. Second of all, no mention of this this super dope long sleeve rollback, whatever. Thirdly. Don't say thirdly. Thirdly. Dave doesn't like that. I learned that very early on uh, while editing at PGP that Dave was not a thirdly guy. Firstly. Fourthly. And I, and I, thirdly, I respected yeah. that about him. And I fourthly, respected that since. It's just it's just bad etiquette. You guys hear about the, these new uh, COVID variants called the flirt? Yeah, I told you about it about 18 uh, minutes ago. Yeah. I'm trying to catch yeah, one, Dave, man. Yeah, Dave, Dave legitimately told you. Well, I got good news I'm for you. I'm trying to catch the COVID variant. I'm I don't, trying to get flirty with it. I either need to get a summer up. weight comforter or I need to stop sweating at night. But your boy's, your boy's throat situation is not great. I'm trying to get that flirt on. Uh, I might have it right now. I'm top candidate in the office for having the flirt. Can we make out after this? I want no, it too. We can just shut each ourselves in a, in a small room and talk for hours. Let's get flirty. It's fine. I mean, whatever. Anyway. Very happy to be here, man. God, what a show this you is. You know what? We're not if they want us to take it seriously and, and fear it, you can't do flirt. Yeah, right? It's like, ooh, that sounds like a fun one. You know? Is it called that because people get is it like is it acquired just you know that easily just from flirting? It's named after the technical names for their mutations. It's a it's a 
group of variants called the flirt variants, plural. Man, do I need to start wearing a mask? Bro, let's go out this weekend. There's a flirt variant happening. Yeah, you should start That's wearing good. a mask. I think I'm going to start masking. There's Dude. a lot of masks on the uh, plane. Dude, yeah. you couldn't pay me to wear a fucking face diaper. Fate. You're so woke. Dude, those fucking face diapers, dude. I hope you guys are fucking happy. <laughs> People call them that? I've never heard that. Oh, dude, that was like the gross. That was the grossest time That's of COVID is when, is when people came up with the term face diaper. And it was just like, okay. Just to make it sound. Like, yeah. And yeah. it was like, okay, dude. For, for P words. That's just, not cool. I just wore a, a Jason mask. There's some it was funny... pretty twisted. <laughs> really? Yeah. It didn't even cover my mouth. It was weird. I just wore the ghost face mask. From Scream. Oh, the mask from Scream? Yeah. That's epic. It was. It was That's sick. It's pretty sick. People are scared. They typically won't let you on planes with those, but uh, it's a different I fucking time. did it anyway. I don't it's care. Unprecedented. What are you going to do? Stop me? Yeah, they probably could. You had pre-check. You're good. <laughs> they checked you out. Were you good? Did you pass that, that check? Yeah, how about you tell everyone what pre-check means, Dave? He informed me as we were getting on the plane oh, no, in no. Chicago. He informed me... 30 seconds before he informed you. <laughs> he was really it. proud of that joke, yeah. wasn't he? What? They just had the new pre-check. Um, it's is they, they take a black light and just hold it down by your, your crotch <laughs> to see if you've preed. I can't let you on the plane. <laughs> I yeah, don't know why true. that why that would be a thing. I didn't How say many people that. did they catch with it? I don't know. Uh, you have to ask them. They Sir, you clearly preed. You should uh, FOIA that. See if you can get some some records, some government records. This is not true, by the way. Yeah, I didn't get any black light treatment at uh, Midway yesterday. Really? No. You must have had clear. <laughs> Dude, the the clear situation going on at the Austin airport right now is the most dire it's ever been. When Dylan walked into the airport the other day, Dave and I were not in line together, but we kept on crossing each other in the in the S line that was forming. Is that what it's called? I don't know. We're going back and forth. Sure. Snake line, snake drafting. And uh, Dylan walks in looking like he slept in the parking lot. Yeah. You looked so tired when you, you walked in tired. for that Did flight. I really? You, you were normal by the time like I talked to you at the gate. But when you walked into the airport, it looked like you had literally been sleeping like on the curb for the flight oh, the next gosh. morning. Yeah. I don't I felt but fine. The, I guess I was I guess I was tired. The, the clear line. Dave and I were we were chopping through the pre-check line pretty decently. It was a huge pre-check <laughs> line, but it moved quickly. The clear line was just standstill. No one moving, just watching the pre-check line go. I was like, how are these people still standing I here? I thought about it and I was like, I do still have clear. And then uh, uh thank God I just I just committed to pre. Are we getting to a point where so many people have pre-check now that the regular line just moves faster? No, definitely doesn't move faster. Okay. And I also I also think that like even though those lines are getting very long, it still it still saves you to have those things. Yeah. Clear has saved me like twice where I definitely would have missed my plane had I not had clear. Maybe not definitely. It took the pressure off. Dude, I always say clear eyes, full hearts. Yeah. Friday night lights. Mm. I like not having to take my shoes off. Or in my case on uh, Friday, my boots, baby. There's been a lot of hullabaloo online plane. about this lately. Have you seen it? What? A lot of chatter about um, – there's an article written, I think, by the New York Times about uh, – About Dave wearing boots to the airport? No, nah, about just etiquette at parties. And and somebody was like, don't ask me to take the shoes off. And that part of the column really started creating a dialogue. At a party? Yeah. You can't do that. Like a house party? Yeah. You can't do that. These are New Yorkers, keep in mind. <clears throat> keep in mind they're That's New Yorkers. That's crazy. Uh -huh. If, I, if you're I a agree. if you're a shoes off household, you can't have a, a house party. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's that's the rule. That's out of the question, honestly. Oh, I I mean, I take my shoes off when I enter the house anyway, most of the time. Uh, but if we have people over, it never crosses my mind to even tell them to take their shoes off, just because that seems like a, a nightmare to manage. Yeah, like I don't I don't want to be telling everybody. Like, what if it's Randy and he's got his toe issues? Especially mm -hmm. when like. Like uh, shoes are a big deal, especially to women who like to put an outfit together. Oh, like, oh, hold on, tell us more. No, it's true. They're like what? shoes are like. Is Dylan sexist because he's saying that guys can't get a fit off too? We, we spent time around women to know enough time around women to know that the shoe part of their outfit is like what they think about the most. Well, Some of do. us Randy, more than Randy others. Doesn't. Also, I he learned. Tried. I learned. <laughs> I learned that while in it's Chicago, full. very few people in Chicago wear boots. I got so many comments from not just people at the meetup, but strangers on the street being like, dude, boots, man. Are those ostrich? Like, yeah, 
Dude, no one hey, wears, dude, no like, no one wears uh, boots in the Midwest. I got they like don't. 20 comments from strangers on People, the street. Someone went out of their way to tell me like, yeah, nobody wears them up here. I'm like. Yeah, someone told me that too. Probably the same person. <laughs> it's Chicago. I mean, I know I don't it's know. not like the. It's not the wild it's like, west. It's like they still like the what, Randy? It's like they never seen them before. Yeah, what, no, Randy? No one wears boots <laughs> up there at all. And that's why Randy can't move back to Chicago because well, he owns like 12 pairs now. Is that a, why I was getting so many looks? You get a couple hombres from Texas up there, you see what happens, buddy. Mm -hmm. Damn. We'll bring some boots out on you. That's why when I was walking through the batting cage just trying to get to the bathroom, people were like, just getting out of my way. Yeah. All those, all oh, those Gen Zers that were standing there. This guy's probably packing heat. They're like, oh, well, this guy's not fucking around. This guy's probably got a small bladder, but. Got boots on. I doubt they thought that. You're just going to a bar. People use the restroom there. It's a thing. Yeah, but I used it more than they did. True. What are you saying? That's your restroom? Shot at the attendant. Yeah, I zelled him some money. That was chill of you. I you bought it. I had to buy a pack of gum. Buying a pack of gum at a meetup's a really good purchase, if I'm being honest with you. Because no, somebody didn't bring the nicotine gum. This guy. Didn't bring the Lucy. You didn't bring the Lucy. Why was I supposed to bring gum for I don't you? Know. I don't even bring gum, gum for you. I don't even chew the gum. He's not your fucking pledge. I don't, You're the I guy. don't do the gum, bitch. You're the guy who's always supposed to be holding. I don't know if that's... I'm not a pledge. You're Lucy pledge. Randy kept trying to shove cameras in my pockets so that I would uh, Randy take was, photos. And I was like, Randy, I, I don't want to be the guy... I, I don't want to be the guy walking around putting flash photography in people's faces. Randy was on his goofiest at that. Randy meeting. over there oh, shoving dude, he hand was so down giddy. He was so giddy. We're lucky that Randy is like pr relatively normal today. The yeah, thing yeah. about Randy in Chicago is that because he used to live there, he walks with a certain strut. He does. And when, when I don't know if you notice this, when we're in a group walking together, he's always in the lead. He's like I'm you guys that. are following me. But he I'm also that, do that always. But so because he, he lived there, everything's a landmark to him in relation to us. And so he will point out anything. He's like, oh, yeah, that's dude, yeah. That place serves hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing yeah. notable about yeah. him. It's just, oh, no, I had a hot dog there. My dad one time. used to work in that building right there. Yeah. Hey, Randy, uh, what, what neighborhood is this? Really cool uh, architecture. I don't know. I don't know. Nah, oh, we're, we're, we're driving down the highway. He's like, where are we right now? I'm like, I don't know. Chicago. That seems like a reasonable question. Where are we right now? We're on the highway, Dave. <laughs> There's, you look over to the right. That's a really cool church. What is that? It's like we were in his city, and he wanted to show us around, but he didn't know a ton. He knew he knew a few things. He's like, man, this place has changed, bro. But like in his Randy way. Yeah. Can we officially talk about Chicago? Like officially, officially? Yeah. Bro, let's go out this weekend. There's a crazy event happening. I like to turn up. Bro, bro, bro. There's a crazy event happening. Let's just go have fun and let's go with it. David Ward Bros, let's go. Recapping this weekend in Chicago, presented by our friends in Chicago, Muggsy. Muggsy makes damn comfortable clothing for guys everywhere. They started by reinventing the jeans game in 2015, and now they make the best jeans, chinos, tops, and joggers ever. Spent a bunch of time in the Muggsy store the other day, a couple hours plus. Went around, felt pretty much um, uh, damn near everything. Let me just say, my Muggsy power rankings have changed since being in that. They've yeah, had, they've added some dope shit. I feel bad for the email they're going to get from us with all the requests we have. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because that ca that little hint of cashmere in those uh, sweatshirt Unreal. things. Oh, my God. Unreal. So soft. Uh, yeah, I was like, I want that. I want that. Mm -hmm. I want that. Give me that. It was kind of like I... As much as I enjoyed them saying, don't buy anything, we'll just send it to you, I also wanted the immediate gratification of being yeah. able to wear one of those things on the plane the did, next day and did stuff. Did they say that? So I just stole the shit. Did they say oh, that? Oh, that was yeah. you? Yeah, I just stole the shit. Oh, then, they, were, they tried to pat me down. I was like, nah, man. I'm did wearing they, boots. Did they ask which way you dress? <laughs> they did. The way that I dress is with Muggsy. I told them tucked. <laughs> Made from buttery, soft, padded stretch materials that look stylish but are insanely comfortable. Never too baggy, never too tight. They got over 18,000 five-star reviews from dudes of every shape and size. We love them. First-time customers get 20% back on their first order right now. All you need to do is head to Muggsy.com, enter your email, and the discount code is automatically added to your cart. That's 20% back on the only jeans and pants you will ever wear again. Free shipping, free returns on every single order. So the only risk is never knowing how great they truly are. Again, Muggsy.com, 20% back. Enter that email. Where shall we begin? There's a lot to cover here, boys. There's a lot to cover. Ooh. Should we hit, should we, how about like we each list our highlights, like our best parts? I'm just a high life living the low life. Okay. Um, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> I thought it was a decent idea. I've got some, we'll do, I'll, I'll finish with my, my MVPs and you guys can, Oh, pine. Okay. Okay. You're going to finish with them or are you going to start with them? Give me a start or finish. Go ahead, bitch. 
VP number one. Okay. I've got, and these are all, these are all listeners. Okay. Whose names, um, I may or may not remember. MVP number one is Grace. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Good First call. of all, she is one of a handful of listeners that went back to back nights. Yes. Mugsy meetup or Mugsy happy hour. Mm-hmm. A few of the proud. Um, Although I noticed she posted an Instagram, and you two are clearly visible in her slideshow. Your Not a boy, great photo of me. Your boy, Straight however, up. didn't quite make it, Grace. Hmm. Maybe you shouldn't big time her. Huh. Yeah, I, maybe, yeah, you're allowed to, like, look people in the eye and talk to them. Oh. Here's a, and I had call. numerous backers come up to me and say, big text, more like big time, Dylan won't talk to me. That's bullshit. Why I, did I you, was, why was that a headline? I was so kind to everyone, including Grace. She had ample opportunity to take a picture. With Shows her. up Friday, Saturday to the actual meetup with uh, Wilmon's branded signs. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. The joy, the mean. joy that I felt when I saw the Wilmon sign uh, getting put up. No one had told me it was there. No one told me anything about it. But I was on the other side of the bar, and I just saw someone struggling to put it on the wall. It just made me so happy to see. She also brought a Wilmon's uh, like poster board. Well done. It was like, what do you call it when there's like a, a back it's like cut out and there's like a whole back to it i don't know it was really well done you know what i think that's about? a good descriptor anyway, i'll keep going and she set it out on the table there at the meetup with the with the pen no so it was just on the table and a backer came up to me and said will i have a pen i think that we should oh, all sign this that wasn't a grace initiative and i looked at him and i was like that's a really good idea i was like that being said it does look like it's pretty nice and i don't want to give you the clearance to do it without talking to someone and he was like, well, I, th- I think we should do it. And I was like, yeah, I, I think we should too. And so he just started doing it. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's all, she, apparently hey. she's going to mail it to us. Yes. we None uh-huh. of us wanted to take it and take responsibility for it because I knew I was going to bend it on the so flight home. At the end of the – so 10 o'clock rolls around and like that's when the piano – there's dueling pianos in that room. That's when they start kicking off. And by that time, people who weren't there for the meetup started to roll in and look for tables. And I, I looked over and I saw some people. I'm like – Fairly certain they weren't there for us signing it. And I was like, I can only imagine what's being written on this. No. So hopefully there's some good stuff. I signed it. it. I yeah. signed it. Yeah, that's a good MVP, Dave. Who else you got? Uh, uh, the Canadian guy's dad. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Uh, sh- shout out to them both for for coming into town. Um, nice guys. And uh, just the pops, man. He Not only did he come out to the meetup, uh, he made it to the afters. Electric. He uh he he's the rare Canadian that you get to talk to in the States who's who just drops A's all the time. Oh yeah, eh? What part were they from? Uh Windsor, which is very close to Detroit. Okay. So if you go across the bridge in Detroit, you find yourself in Windsor, Canada. Great, great. Mm-hmm. Um another MVP, Randy, for um when it came time to to hit the uh afters, not only did Randy drop like a, a a photo of the sign of Boss Bar where we'd be going. Mm-hmm. He dropped a detailed map, including traffic patterns. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he went back to back. He's making sure the folks get there. When 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 I saw Randy after the meetup, he was not too drunk or anything, but you were drunker than I anticipated you being. And so I got a lot of enjoyment out of it because I was like, oh, Randy's kind of he's kind of having fun right now. Let's I had do this. two Red Bulls at uh, Boss Bar just to stay awake. Okay. God. That, that checks out. Really? Two? Yeah. What time did you, you order? Sleep? Two Red oh, Bulls, please. Two Red Bulls, please. Sugar free? No. Oh. All right. I had a full sugar Red Bull recently, and it was so fucking good. It's very like, tasty. It's, it, it tasted like a high school Subaru drive. Yeah, very tasty. When we got to the hotel, uh, Brett, like they had the little like lobby um, store. Mm-hmm. Brett got a sugar free Red Bull, immediately drank it. And then an hour later, he was drinking a Celsius. That like is, when we actually went to the, the that's out of pocket. Thing. I was like, "What? What is this?" That's out of pocket. Uh, shout out to him, man. You guys ever steal from those stores on accident? Hmm. In the hotels, when like they have like the stuff <laughs> up, and you're like, "I don't know who to ask to." Pay. It's like late at night, and you just want like a water and something to chew on, and no, no one's around. Mm-hmm. I did it in New York one time, it? and it's it's lived with me for the entire time. Like <laughs> yeah, right. no one was there, and I was like, "I don't know what to do," and I like I don't really. If they catch me on camera, like I'll fully pay for it. It's not that big a deal. Uh, tall guy drinking Budweiser. Clay, yeah, Clay. Yeah. Just uh, yet another six three and above listener, and 
I was like, oh, this guy's tall. And then you look down, he's just he's just pounding a, some red, white dynamite. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw the uh, the three brothers. Was their last the name? Abbott brothers? The Abbott brothers. I yeah. talked to them probably more than any other group. I liked they four were, brothers. They were so the movie chill. With Mark Wahlberg. They were very nice guys. And Andre three thousand. I enjoyed them a lot. They were all separated by one year, just three brothers, and they were just chill as fuck. Irish triplets. One of them had an excellent mustache. They look like they would be in a like an alt rock band. Yeah, all together. I mean, sure. Yeah, they were fun. They were good. They good, were fun. Good dudes. Uh, can I give an MVP please, award to someone please, there? Yeah. Uh, the dude who brought the A1 sauce to do uh, Daniel Boone shots. I missed that. I missed that too. I yeah. That so, so, my I mean, I had made a comment about how my buddies and I, when we were like 20, 21, 22, we, we just did this dumb thing called Daniel Boone shots, which was Jim Beam and uh, A1 sauce. We had a very limited Facebook group, and and this backer was quick acting and brought some A1 sauce, and he and Randy were initiated into the Daniel Boone Society couple, live. A couple of Delta Betas over here now. It was tight, dude. It was Which, tight. It was like on this most recent listener voicemails episode, yeah. too. So it was like the most recent episode. Yeah. What did you think of the shot? A1 it, sauce and whiskey. It was not that bad. It's not that bad. No. Like the A1 sauce is so strong that it really takes away the sting of the whiskey and makes it somewhat palatable as long as you like yes. A1 sauce. He is also one of my MVPs. Uh, and you know, that's, I'll leave it there. I'll keep it short. I mean, they're, you know, the backers in general who, uh, mainly mostly respected my, my wishes on not doing shots. We did the Malort shot right when I got there, Sally documented, it wasn't great. And then, um, one other person was like, come on, man, just do a tequila shot. And I was like, all right, I'll do the fucking tequila. I did a Rumpelman shot. Did a Hand up. I did zero shots. God damn it. I did zero shots. You not didn't only do that. Daniel Boone? Not, no, I'm already in the society. I didn't need to do that. You didn't even do one? No. No, he was just a moderator. I ordained it. it, yeah. It has to be witnessed. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Um, no, not only that, I didn't even get offered shots. I think people knew. Like, I can't do it. I did have, I did have a backer walk up and grab my beer out of my hand to see how much was in it. To see if I needed another one, and I respected that move a lot. I had a lot in it, though. It was a bad night to be a Modelo can. Yeah, they're they're pretty good about making sure we don't go thirsty for too long there. Very generous group of people. Do we have any non meetup highlights? Yeah, I really enjoyed on Saturday around eleven o'clock. I guess we left the hotel. We walked from our hotel. All the way through, what's the park called where the bean is and all that, Randy? Millennium. Millennium. Millennium Park. It was it was great. It was really humid and hot. But other than that, it was just it was an excellent. Uh, the the city was just popping. It it's was an incredibly Chica well done park. Chicago's yeah. a really good Saturday morning walk city. <laughs> we, a lot of people out doing stuff. It was. I really enjoyed that. We walked all the way to um, the lake and along the boardwalk there. Uh, we popped top. Some of us got some ice cream on the way. No, 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 no. I, yeah, I, heard, I heard it was it. not ice no, cream. No, no, no. It was, it was it the ice cream of the future. We popped top and ate Dippin' Dots. Yeah. And walked all the way to the Planetarium Museum, which was good. AC I, was, did you love Top and Dots, dude. AC was blowing cold in there. It felt nice. That was, yeah, that I might got have been this, the highlight of the Planetarium. I got this new hat. <laughs> you got a hat, too. That's a great hat. Thank you. Did the Planetarium suck? It didn't suck, but like I was like, oh, aquarium would have been cooler. Yeah, it would have been. I, I will officially say now, having been to all four of those museums at campus, the planetarium is probably the worst of the four. Yeah, so. we, we kind of chunked fine. it. We it's, chunked it. Well, I felt I I felt bad because we Sally and I were like 45 minutes ahead of you guys. Like by the time you guys got to the bean, we were there 45 minutes before. We didn't actually go up to see the bean. Uh, but there was a backer who's at the Muggsy event. Um, and he was a member at the Art Institute and had messaged Sally being like, uh, if you guys want to get in early f during member hours, I know you said you wanted to go there. I'll get you guys in. So he scanned us in, and I was like, I have to go do this. I wish we had gone there. It was tight. It was tight. Um, I, like it's just a cool museum. Yeah. There's so much to see, and there's so many famous artwork. Like, like there's yeah. so much famous artwork in there that it's like you would just turn a corner and you're like, oh shit. I think I would have enjoyed that more. Or the aquarium. We didn't stick it's around. So fun. How long did you guys go to the aquarium for? The planetarium or planetarium. We were there for an hour and a half, maybe. Okay, that we were. Yeah, we were there for like an hour fifteen. We could have done more, but we were starving. But the walk there for me was more fun than actually being in. Yeah, inside. it was. It was a nice walk. It was top cool. and top. Really cool. The, Got to uh, see the city. We might have gotten bodied by a tour guide on a Segway for no reason at all. Did he pump fake you? No, he just they rode by us, and we're all we'd all popped top at this point. 
And what did he, he was like, he said, hey, you guys are go. doing great. Keep you it going. You guys are doing great, guys. Keep going. And we're like, well, like as, he, as he rolled his tour by on a Segway. That's like, kind bitch, of watch your mouth. The, the view Push of the, him off. The view of the city from where the Planetary Museum is, because you like walk all the way out there. You look back across the, like the little bay there. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. The city's beautiful. It's a cool city. Yeah. Th that interaction was very much Southerners not understanding Midwesterners when the guy was just like being nice to them. <laughs> all, all, those two and like KJ are like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, what's this problem? guy's problem? Okay, Southerners are, are known for being very kind people too. It's same kind of sense. Southern not hospitality kind. is like a hospitable, not kind. I, I completely disagree with no, that. No, no. The mid no, it's it's you're wrong. I, I, there's something they're less neighborly. The the minor exchanges that Midwesterners have are totally different than the exchanges in Texas. Well, what is, you guys are doing great. We were just walking, shirtless. It seemed backhanded. It seemed like, cause I, I, maybe it's because we looked so good. And he's like, I got to knock these guys down a peg. That's how I got it. That's got to be it. I was like, all right. And it's I was like, be it. and he was on a segue. And I was like, you know what? Fair play to you. Fair play. Yeah, no, you're thinking of like Northeast. I think my point just got, my point just got proved right there. The Midwest, no, no you guys have, you what? guys don't do the, you guys don't do the gas station exchanges that Midwesterners have. You just don't. What is that? Just uh, the the hellos, the goodbyes, the thank yous, the the excuse me's. Like everyone in Austin just puts their head down and doesn't talk to each other. Like if you go to a Midwestern gas station, you're going to be, you're going to be saying like, all right, I'll be seeing you. Like whatever, like little comments like that, that like, you just don't have those here. It's just different. The guy looked too dorky to be uh, mean. Like You're he right. Was a, well, he was on a, a nice segue. He was just a nice dork with a helmet on. Maybe he was being nice. But I was just like, oh, we're not really like, it's we're not struggling. We're just kind of walking. Yeah, we're eating ice cream. Yeah, we're eating the ice from the future. Actually, <laughs> it was dude, funny. I'm, so anyway. I've never had dipping dots. It's delightful. What are you What are you waiting for, dog? Um, I don't know. I, I to be honest, I haven't been in a situation where they've been like like perfect for me. Um, um, and I just I would like to do it at some point. Well, I did. I got that tour guide's uh, the company he works for, and I already filed a complaint. <laughs> okay. So, good luck. Good. Good, good luck, buddy. Uh, no, man. There's nothing better than having your shirt off, eating dipping dots in the sun, and you kind of and it melts real quick, so you get kind of that. You get that melty dot. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, so delightful. Does the melty dot interact with the dots that haven't melted yet in oh any my way? God. When it starts to melt, that's when that's prime dipping dots eating right there. The edges, it starts on the edges. You get you eat from the edge in. Oh I had God. two things. I had two, I had two things on Saturday that were just absolutely amazing. I had the Osh burger for lunch, the burger that everyone talks about. And I'm really jealous. Whatever. Though. I've talked shit about it on PGP like a million times. And uh it was honestly incredible. I was very happy with like it. Best burger you've ever had? It's in the it's in the debate. It's in the it's in the debate. I, I'm very comfortable saying that it, I can I could make a case for it being the best. What's the price point on that bad boy? Sixteen bucks. Oh, and then I added cool. bacon because I'm a savage. I was I was gonna guess thirty five. I didn't I didn't add the egg, um, but it was really good. I mean, for two of us, we got two burgers. Uh, I added bacon. She did not. We got uh, some bread and butter pickles, two beers, pickles and is it some fries? And we spent a hundred dollars total. Is it like counter service or is it upscale? Like no. Waiter so okay. That? So here's here's what I did, and I think this is valuable information for anyone going out there because all the Chicago backers were amazed that I got in so quickly. Uh, we were hungry early because I think we just woke up early, walked around all morning, didn't eat breakfast, and so we went at like eleven thirty. And you go up to the guy, you put your name on the list. He says, "All right, here, t give me your number." You have 10 minutes to get here after we text you. And so we went and sh shopped for a little bit. He said it was going to be between 10 and 30 minutes. And so we we're like, all right, let's go to a couple shops. And it, 10 minutes later, got the text, walked right in, sat at the bar, and uh, we had a waiter at the bar. Okay. It wasn't the bartender. It was a guy that was just walking around. And gotcha. so I wish we could have done that. It that was been fun. By the time that I like we had sat down and everything, it, I think you guys would have been waiting forever to do it. Yeah. And, I, and, and But I, I'm glad that I did it one time. It was good. But my favorite thing that I ate all weekend was the Wiener Circle hot dog that we had after the meetup. Let me before we get to that, uh, Baba, Baba Reba. Reba, little Baba Reba, little Baba Reba, excellent. Ba Very favorite Baba meal, Reba. reasonably priced. Food was incredible. Very vibes, hot vibes place. were on point. It was a great. That was spot. my favorite meal in Chicago, easily. Wiener Circle was a, an absolute scene. Though. Looked like a blast. It was so, so cool being there with Dylan. We walk in <clears throat> there right right before us where there are two like older, ground zero. Right before us, there were two older couples, uh, white old, that white older couple, two of them. They walk in, 
and they say uh the guy goes what's up you fucking bitches <laughs> to, to the women working at wiener circle and they like they didn't miss a beat they're oh. like oh fuck you pussy it was so fucking It was so funny. egregious. I was, I was just like, like why are people like, interacting like this? I look at Will. I'm like, we're about to have fun at this place. And it, it We it were did all not playing disappoint. so scared. No one wanted to go order. No one wanted to be the person to get yelled at. So we, Sally and I fed Dylan to the uh, the wolves. After, after the- this, It had to be him. After these couples oh, yeah. placed their order, they said, well, what do you want on your, what do you want on your fucking burger? Or something like that. And the, one of the women goes, I want extra pussy juice on mine. <laughs> It was and the, the, the like, wife of the juice? guy. We were like, this is so out of pocket. And they were like, all right, we'll put pussy juice on it for you. We're like, oh, my God. I don't know. I'm scared. Like, I don't know what to do here. And uh, I, I even asked before they ordered, I said, what? I said, I whispered to him, said, what should I get here? And they were like, you get whatever the fuck they, you know, they were like just, it's like they were, the work, it's like they were working there too. Like they were, everyone was like in on the bed. Oh, yeah. That guy's, that guy has spent six figures their lifetime. There was this, <clears throat> there's this black couple sitting next to us. They had ordered, and then um, I guess their order was ready, and one of them walks out, and they said, hey, black people, is this for here to go? <laughs> and the whole place just fucking erupted. It was hysterical. Like, you, you can't do that. Absolutely hysterical. I need, a, I need like a doc on this. They were calling all the men pussies and all the women bitches. It was so That's fucking fun. It looked good. How was the actual dog? It was really good. It was really good. It was the first time I had had like an official Chicago hot dog, and I was very, very happy with it. And I... I I definitely will be ordering them on menus when I crave it in the future. Man, I, just, I don't know why. I just wasn't hungry. It's probably all the coke you were doing. It might have been the, or the mushroom. Were you doing the coke. regular cocaine or the pink cocaine? I was doing the pink, the flirty coke. So someone so someone ordered the chocolate shake, which uh -huh. is, they don't, I don't think they sell shakes there, milkshakes. Okay. What could it be then? Which is code for um, one of the women behind, you know, working at the counter will show their titties. Right. So they flash the lights on and off for about a minute. And they're like, all right, cameras away. This place passes inspection. Cameras away. And then this woman walks out and just pulls her shirt up and just starts <laughs> bouncing her tits. Okay. It's so um, funny, man. Did, okay. So I had left by this point, I assume. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. You I, missed, didn't, I did not see any You missed the chocolate shake. shake. Yeah. Wow. They okay. did. It, and it was really funny. Okay. I, I was not aware that that actually went down. By it, this point, there were probably 30, 40 people. Oh, it got, we yeah. walked in at a great time because we walked in and got immediate service. And then like everybody, and then when we sat down, it was busy. But I'm really glad we went there. I got out unscathed. Like no one called me a pussy the whole time. Yeah, you got out way too easy. I wanted her yeah. to say something really, really bad to you and just yeah. have it rattle you. It was Damn. really, it was fun. But we were in a gig we were pretty anything. giggly at that point. I don't think anything would have put you in a bad mood. No, I was no, it was all fun. Uh yeah, Baba Reba was fun. That was just a fun flirty. That's a good late night meal. Not late, but like nine, nine PM dinner, something like that. It was a good spot. Um Randy at the airport. I heard uh I heard Randy was a little tie tie at the Had airport. A little trouble yesterday. there. Uh, I don't know. It, it tired. It was more just brain fried. Well, I did. I mean, you were drinking before noon yesterday, per the Bloody Mary on your Instagram story. Mm -hmm. um, but I heard a little rumor that Randy not only sat in the incorrect row, but the incorrect uh, like side, side of the of plane. The plane. <laughs> he just he got on the plane and sat behind Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Even like did like a funny like grab Dave on the head thing to let me know I was sitting behind him. 30 seconds later, uh, you gotta get up. <laughs> yeah, a mother and her daughter is like, that's, I sat in 24B, and my so, seat, seat was 23E. But before so, this, before this, so Randy's wearing the, the Sunday Scaries crew neck, like in the airport. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm sitting next to him, we're waiting for the plane to board, and he's like, I'm gonna be hot. So he pulls out like a, I'm hot. he pulls out a rowback workout tee. Oh my God, he's gonna put that on. Makes sense. He puts it on over the crew neck, and, Decides to take off the crew neck by like pulling it through under the sleeve when there's a bathroom about 50 yards away. Honestly, no one's going to care if you just take no. off your sweatshirt and put on a different it, shirt in the airport. And like the, the scene that it attracted, people were just like, uh, it, you look like you're trying to get out of a straight jacket or like Houdini, a Houdini magic trick. And I did it. You did it in about 45 seconds. It's because Brett and I were just like, <laughs> Brett and I were just looking at you like, dude, what is this guy doing? Preposterous. Yeah, when you guys are changing it. at the gym, like say you get out of the shower, do you leave the towel on to put your boxers on or do you drop no. towel and let the ass I ass drop hang real out? quick. I drop it. Drop I try not quick. to spend too much time hanging, but. I only confront this when I go to like resorts and you're changing in like the locker room or something. 
because I don't work out famously. Mm, um, not yet. And yeah, I've just become a. I've embraced the uh, the old man in me, and I've just been dropping. That's fine. Putting that fanny out there for the boys. Let oh, hang, fanny. The older you get, the less you care. Yeah. Judging by all the very naked old men. In the I think it's a rooms. right. Of, I think it's like almost a right that you get. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm older now. Unless some you're of, a Targaryen. Some of the guys will just completely naked and walk up to the sink and like start shaving like butt ass naked. It's like, what are you hey, doing, man? I've got a hygiene uh, low point from the trip. And I want to just put this out there. This isn't that big of a deal. Wait, Dylan, was there a thumbprint in your. Did I do something? Chicago no, style pizza. No, no. Dylan was a, a good roommate. He was fine. Thank I you. Mean, no issues at all. Um, so, you know, hotel lobbies will often have like the big jug of water that has like cucumber in it or mm -hmm. something. And they've got the cups there. It's a nice touch. It has the little spout. It's the thin spout. I watched a young lady walk up to it with her water bottle and filled up the water bottle by putting the spout all the way into it and then just flipping it down to like, and it wasn't, um, it's clearly one that she'd been drinking out of. So she just contaminated the entire thing by just sticking it all the way in there, even touching the water that she drank. And I was like, dude, you are such a fucking just beast for this. And then I watched Dylan fill up and drink out of it. Oh, God, it bothered dude, me. I don't care. It bothered me. You're going to get flirty. I, I, I'm trying to get the flirt. What kind of water bottle was it? Was it like a Stanley no, or was it like a Nalgene? No, no, no. It was, it was like a um, whatever the Chicago grocery store of choice is. Okay. It was like their store brand. Okay. It didn't look good. Okay. Had it been Evian, it might have changed the game. Uh, a, a final note for me: I I love Chicago. I think it's a wonderful city. It's very pretty. It's popping. People are out doing their thing. The park was just absolutely alive. It's just a great city, man. I have a weird relationship with the city because I, I respect it. I think it's an awesome city. I think Chicago people like Chicagoans themselves are great people. But I, so much of my Chicago history was uh, just me visiting my friends when I was in my like early 20s and partying and then feeling like shit all day there and hating the city and then doing it again that night and then waking up and going home. And so I just have this like weird anxiety whenever I go to Chicago that like, yeah. oh man, like this city's treated me terribly in the past. It would be nice to go without an itinerary that's like bar stop after bar stop and just kind of enjoy dude, it. It's, a, and... it's such a drinking city. Yeah. It's such a drinking city that it's hard to avoid going to bars. Oh. Hey, at uh, Boss Bar, I was uh, in the bathroom. First of all, a lot of bars in Chicago, the bathrooms are downstairs. Learn that. Or at least the ones we went to. But at Boss Bar, I went down to pee, and uh, there was a group of, like, early 20s, like, Irish guys, Irish kids that were, like, look real cool. And Hello, one of, David. One of them That's got bad. One of them was in a stall, and the bouncer came and uh, grabbed him and pulled him out of there because he was doing coke. Yeah, and kicked uh, him out. I've seen multiple people do coke in that bathroom a lot. Is and that they, why? Is that why you chose it for the uh, after party? No, because it was one block away, and I Dylan like, didn't I, go to Boss Bar, did he? No. no, Dylan. I didn't, didn't go to Boss Bar. I was gonna bar. say I didn't. I didn't get the vibe. Dylan was gonna get make it to Boss Bar. I was in bed by like eleven fifteen each night. It was awesome. Yeah, I was pretty hit, man. I was pretty hit. These guys were like all like five nine and under, so they weren't big guys, and the, and the bouncer was huge. He's a big guy, and they were like so they huge kicked, guys. They kicked him out, and the guy was kind of putting up a little fight, like. Dude, you know, like, oh, I didn't do it. And then the guy's like, no, nope, gotta go, gotta go. Kicked him out. And then I watched his boys like contemplating, like, oh, he could have hit butter him. Oh, he should have done it. And I was just like, dude, you guys, there's like, it would have been like the funniest little fight because you just got these tiny little Irish guys versus this giant bouncer dude. Would you have joined the Irish guys since you, nah. you know, your brothers with them? No. Okay. No. Okay. It would have been over quick. It would have been a uh, pretty funny. Okay. Shout out Cork County. Major shout out Cork County. Well, after a weekend of uh, eating and drinking in Chicago, it's it's FitBod time. Time Ooh. to enter the FitBod era because uh, summer's here. And whether you're a seasoned gym goer or just starting your fitness jersey, the essential your workout really needs is FitBod. It's a fitness app that customizes each workout based on your goals and adapts to them as you improve. It's a great app. Guys, like, have you seen? They've, they've rebranded yet again. Look They've updated their current branding. And, and, and Randy, we need you to update the the thing on the screen from here on forward okay Randy. i was on their site the other day and i was just like oh, dude it, it never stops with them i'll make a note but these guys are always evolving always changing just like it does for your workouts fitbod creates a personalized workout routine based on your goals your fitness level and your available equipment maybe you have a gym membership maybe you're one of those people at home that uh bought those adjustable weights during covid oh yeah for like a thousand dollars Maybe you're just looking for some body weight workouts on your work trip. I don't know what it could be, but whatever workout you get, 
It adapts to your growth, so each workout is challenging enough to push you to make progress. It tracks your muscle recovery so you can avoid burnout and keep up the momentum. No excuses about not being able to build your legs. They'll adapt for you. They'll adapt to you. You can learn movements the right way. They got over a thousand demonstration videos. It's like a personal trainer, but better. It's cheaper. It's easier. And it builds a custom fitness plan that works for you. Add FitBod to your workout essentials. Join FitBod today and get your personalized workout plan. Get 25% off your subscriptions and try the app for free at FitBod.me slash Steam. That's FitBod.me slash Steam. F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash Steam. Nashville. Okay. Tennessee. Zach Bryan, pretty popular. Soup Pops right now. He yep. might be the biggest – is he the biggest male artist in the world right now? I think in – I think in like, – the United States. In the United States right now, I would say that like he is – if he's not like – from a popularity standpoint, from like a number standpoint, streams, whatever, I don't really know. But the amount of people that like him that don't normally listen to radio country or – I mean I don't know if – I wouldn't classify him necessarily as like pure radio country – but it shocks me when people well, start bringing it up. I'll say this. The bar that Randy and Brett and those guys – no, maybe Randy didn't go. The bar that Brett went to – That's where we like got uh, lunch. Yeah, yeah, Home yeah. City. Next to little Bob Ariba. When we were outside, the cover band played like – I heard three different Zach Bryan songs. Well, well, when you said you listened to his new album and you actually really liked it, I was like, okay, this guy appeals to a lot of different types of – because that's not your – I don't scene. normally listen to like honestly. I, I like him and I respect him a lot. I don't listen to him that often because it's pretty heavy stuff most of the time, and I don't really feel like going through it on my drive to work. Like I kind of just want to turn my brain off a little bit. But I have the utmost respect for his music. I love it. He's good. I think man. it's really good. He's really good. Okay. Well, he brought two people out on stage. Uh, I think he played consecutive nights, so this was not all in the same night. And, uh, which one did you say is a bigger pull? Casey Musgraves, who was on one of his singles. Very popular song, mm -hmm. or the Hawk Tua Girl. Hawk Tua Girl's rise to fame has been unbelievable. I just saw a picture. Shaq just posted a picture with her. So like she's Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, from Shazam. The same guy. I wish it was Shaq from Love Island. It's it's Shaquille O'Neal. I'm deep into two different seasons of Love Island right now. I'm just you, living you, you in multiple villas, yeah, dude. Brought her on stage and let her uh, sing a couple lines. Did she her. not know the song? I, she, hey, she struggled hey, through part of it. Not super well. She got like, emboldened at one point. That's kind of his bit. I mean, it is his bit. He brings people out to do revival at the end. And, you know, I, I could, whatever. That's fine. That's your thing. Um, but, yeah, she's kind of she looked a little uncomfortable there. And that is like a very awkward position to be for a civilian. You don't have like the headpiece in to like know like your volume. You don't know how far you should have your mouth from the microphone. Like I Barrett and I didn't do a sound check before we did our retail therapy event at Nordstrom. We did it like earlier that afternoon, but by the time we sat down and had the microphones in front of us, I was like, Oh, I don't know where to put this right now. And I I my first note was like really high because mm -hmm. I was just like it my I had the microphone too close. Well, um, Casey had a weekend too. I don't know if you guys are following her on Instagram. Um, no, out of respect for my wife, I don't follow her on Instagram. A lot of denim. She hit him with that Mario fit. A lot of denim. Big denim weekend for her. Big denim. It's good for her. I guess. I, think, I mean, I think Casey's the bigger get. You know, <laughs> probably. Um, but is Hawk Tua in more demand right now? How long does this last? Hawk Tua? Yeah, what's Hawk Tua's? I don't know. Is she going to last longer than uh, NFT Nick? Hawk Tua, if I'm Hawk Tua right now, I'm trying to do every podcast I can possibly do. Like, I'm trying to get all the way up to Alex Cooper. And I feel like with the Gluck Luck stuff, like, you could easily f find a way to get that get that done. Um, I don't I, think Alex Cooper's doing that much Gluck Luck content how much these new, days. How much new material can you... Uh, can you get from Hawk to her? If you're having her on the show, like, My, what can you ask her that she hasn't already answered? But eight this times? girl's voice and her demeanor is so like country and it's great that like accent. I think that she could do some interviews and actually build a little bit of a following. She just did a Barstool one, I think. Is she gonna have a longer shelf life than Tiffany Gomez? Uh, uh, Maybe Gomez. Gomez had the she, air of mystery about what happened, whereas we know that she this girl just spits on that. She thing. has ascended 
quicker than Gomas, I think. No, not I think. Definitely. I mean, I've seen a lot of tweets that just say, I'm assembling a team, and it's just yeah. those two and two other very online Edmonton, people. Edmonton girl. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Doing Playboy. Yep. From what I've heard, haven't seen. Out of respect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think she's adorable. Hunk to a girl. Have you DM'd? No, no. Yeah. Hit it with the Mario. You no, dropped this. I mean, I, I just think she's cute. Like, not in like a, oh, she's fine, but like a, her person. She's quirky and cute, you know? I like her cute accent. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna segue this into our next segment by asking a question. Uh, how fast would we have had a Hawk to a 24 shirt up if we were at Grand X? Oh my god! Yeah, it would have happened. Like I already saw them out there, like you know, seconds after she did it. But like we would have definitely had Hawk to a merch going like crazy. I wonder who determined like who the first was to put that out there in that like because you got to be right on the spelling like. I don't know if I would have done Hawk Tua and spelt it like that. It's a very, it's not an easy thing to like phonetically put out. It's like that sound. Cause it's not, you know, it's not a prototypical. If word. AJ Hawk and Tua were teammates. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. their social media team would have had the easiest road to virality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I would have spelled it H O C K, like Hawking a loogie. I, I like that. So. I like that. Hawk Tua. Yeah. I think so too. I like that. Other one is uh, famously a bird. Mm -hmm. Bird of prey. I'm sorry, sure. a predator. She's uh, a little a bird. bird. She is a little bird. That's true. If she was on the debate stage with these two, would it have been more watchable? Did you guys watch the debate? Uh, some of it. I, I made it about 15 minutes and I realized what was happening and I just, I felt uncomfortable and kind of sad. It was 95% just like, this is really sad and uncomfortable and 5% hilarious. It was jarringly, it was jarringly uh, just evident of everything that was happening in front of you. It was like, oh, okay. So we have Biden just being older than we all realized he was. We all realized I, he was old as knew. hell. But like, but did we know that he was <laughs> yes. borderline incapable? Like he trailed off like yeah. numerous times. Man, someone posted a a like a side by side video of Biden debating last time around yeah, like four years ago. It's tough. And then the one from the other night. And it's shocking. Well, you remember like they the did difference. this with W and they did it with Obama, but it would be like they'd show them like a picture of them when they entered office and then like them late in like their second term or whatever. And it was always just like, oh, yeah, look how they've aged and their hair is gray now. Yeah. It's like, man, what do you think was going to happen? Biden didn't like physically look that different from four years ago, but the way he talks is it's night and day. It's really sad. Well, it's not a good endorsement for uh, either candidate when the most life that they show the entire debate is when they start talking about their handicaps, like their mm -hmm. golf handicaps. It was Fuck just it. like, OK, yeah. I had just turned it off, like just turned it off because I didn't really want to spend my entire night watching just these two old men argue. And so I, I turned on Love Island and checked my phone and immediately saw that they had been talking golf. And I was like, okay, well, I'm, yeah, going, I'm, go, I'm I, going back in. I went back in for that too. Um, both Okay, so just to be clear, both of them lie about their handicap, right? Dude, I don't think either of them has recorded a score in a very long time. I don't think, that, I don't think they've recorded a genuine score in over a decade. Okay, here's a question that's, that's been on my mind for so long. Is Trump actually a good golfer? I think he's probably actually good. But I don't think he's like if he his swing is atrocious. Yeah, like it's he's still an old man, and he's like as he said, Dylan. He's won Dude, numerous club championships. It's not not senior, bad. not senior club championships, Dylan. Regular club it's, championships. It's but did he bad actually? Bad that's he, the thing. He takes it back weird, but like he gets it into position and, and hits the ball. Like it's not bad. It's a good old man swing. I just don't believe that he's winning every club championship. There's no like, way. It's such a Kim Jong Un thing to do. But for Biden to there say he got down to a six handicap when he was VP, there's but he's why, very he said uh, when he was VP he got down to a six. But why again? Why should our like our vice president should not be peaking their handicap at you think that during like, their vice presidency? There's a reason why like uh, after my second kid, I, I jumped up like to a twelve. Yeah, like I've gotten just, yeah. You know, I feel like once you get into into the White House in any capacity, like. You shouldn't play better. But do you get more vacation because you're in a more high-pressure job? It's fair. Is that how you justify it? Uh, yeah, it's, I need this, honey. Dr. Jill. My buddy made the, immediately made the point. He goes, that's the biggest reaction that Trump has got, given him all night when Biden said that he oh, got he down disgusted. to a six points out. He was like, are you kidding me? He was absolutely disgusted. I've it was finally something swing. that he wanted to talk about. 
it it just shows that no matter what, if you put two guys in a room and they decide to argue with each other, it's all going to come down to a pissing contest about like who can hit the ball further, he whose handicap he, is lower. He said he can't hit the ball fifty yards. And like he probably can't. He's very old man. Yeah. But now there's been a bunch of videos coming out of Biden on the course, and like there's okay. been, to be fair, there's been a lot of Trump videos of him on the course too, playing um, like shit. But like, the, no, the, my, just the only thing I really, I really enjoyed was him. Him not only saying like I've seen your swing, it was I've I know, seen your swing. I know your swing. I know your swing. I like, know. I've it. I've looked. I've studied. Okay. I've studied your swing, and it is not good. <laughs> Look, I know. I don't believe it. Like that is such a. That's something that gets tossed in, like, that's group text argument over, like, somebody who's maybe, like, fudging their like handicap. Like, sandbagging? This is a pr- <laughs> my, my, or my father-in-law went on a bad run of, of playing. He, he, if he heard this, he might kill me. But he was on a bad run. He just wasn't playing well. And he got an email from Jin saying that it was getting to be a member guest season and they thought he was tanking his handicap. And so they stopped his handicap from moving up. No. Yes. Shut up. He was like, it was such a defeating email to get. I didn't know they did that. I didn't know they did that either. He was like, he's like, I really had to assess or reassess what was going on. Wow. I'd be pretty upset if I got an email from Jen saying that uh, we think you're tanking. I'd probably pull a Dylan and just maybe abandon the game of golf altogether. Just go for virtual golf. It's a tough one. So did they they not have golden tee at Sluggers? Did we? They did have one. Did you play? Um, How'd the batting cage go? It was fine. I, I don't feel like I embarrassed myself. I didn't exactly, you know, tee off on these pitches or anything. He tried to have that Griffey swag. Yeah, he did. He knew he was on camera. I was I was wearing boots, too, which is not great. It was you like got to have that built-in excuse. That's why slick, I wouldn't mind. It was a slick surface if you're wearing, like, leather-bottom shoes. What? Uh, they don't wear boots in the Midwest. I know. What uh, What was the speed? Oh, it wasn't fast. It was probably 60, probably 60, 65, okay. something like that. Yeah. Okay. It was, it was throwing meat up there, but it was very inconsistent too. Man. Some of them were really high. If I had been in there, it would have gone down different. Yeah. But Why didn't you get in there? Nobody invited me. They were like, yeah. dude, we, we, we don't have any improved D, man. I, 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 threw down, I threw down like 10 straight bunts. The Golden T was an older machine. Well, it's just so slapping I, singles. I mm-hmm. couldn't check in. Um, someone left a game open, so I, I played one hole in someone else's game. They were like 25 over or something. I was like, oh, wow, okay, what a fucking play. dumbass. Was that Randy's game? Probably. Did you get him back down? I birdied a hole, and that was and that. Was that. Were the listeners watching you? It's like KJ and one other person. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Did, shout out to KJ and Ricky. Yeah, I want to give a special shout out to both of those t- as well. Like, I, I don't get to see those two nearly enough. We had actually never met Ricky in person. Ricky was great. Uh, hey, Ricky, uh, congrats on passing the vibe check. What yeah. a chill dude. That's a cool dude, man. Yeah, you know, it's it's tough to like meet. It's tough to meet us and then like go to dinner with us because um, it's a lot. And he uh, is we're idiots. You did the Baba Reba dinner and. You know, it could that didn't get out of control, but it could have. Like it was on the cusp of like being an out of control thing, and and they they handled themselves. Bye, bye, well. bye. And KJ, you know, KJ was what's great. there to say about KJ that hasn't been said? He was great. KJ ordered a uh, he had the clutch move of ordering a pizza at happy hour, mm-hmm. uh, of which I ate a lot of. That pizza at that random fucking restaurant down the street from Muggsy was delightful. Did you get? Did you snag a piece of that? No, it looked, it looked good. You got pepperoni and pepperoncinis. Oh, what was that place, Tarantino? I don't know. We just walked up to it and sat down on wet chairs. Then Randy disappeared to going out with his real friends. Yeah, Randy's like, I'm going out. Nah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go meet up. That's when Randy really does his work. Going out to my Serbian friends. The Serbians. As he put my it, Serbian his words, friends. not mine. His Serbian friends who are from Indiana and speak perfect, you know, no, I don't think they've ever been to Serbia. I love that. Can you verify that claim? <laughs> Have they been to Serbia? You can't call them Serbian know. friends when they're just from the Midwest. Well, all their parents are from Serbia and have thick accents. They're just the first generation Serbian. Mm-hmm. First generation. And they're like very, very culturally do like Give me the Serbian accent. Serbian. Give me a Serbian oh, accent. Yo, Mr. David, come, come, come here. Fuck yeah. That's right. good. They they enlightened me that the, the lambs that they roast are not uh they're not old. They're quite young. Oh. Yeah. Little little lambs. Two, maybe three months. Mary had a little lamb, huh? Yep. And we spit roasted that bitch. Damn. Not Mary. The they lamb. were really nice guys. They I, I don't need to take anything away from them. But presenting them as my Serbian friends is just a little well, misleading. Just like, we had just started we just talked about them being Serbians. So. Yeah. 
Let's talk about BetterHelp. Today's show is sponsored by our friends over at BetterHelp. We've been pretty upfront and honest about our relationship with therapy. I enjoy therapy so much. Uh, I, I kind of use it as a touch and go kind of thing. Uh, I haven't actually had a session in a little bit. That's because I haven't needed it lately. But so, therapy is always something that I'm willing to turn to and it's always an option that I think about because sometimes in life you're just faced with tough choices and the path forward is not always clear, whether it's work, whether it's personal life, combination of the two, whatever it could be, it's just a lot easier to get things off your chest and to talk to someone about it. And that's why we've partnered up with BetterHelp. If you're, uh, I mean, I've benefited from therapy in the past and if you're thinking of starting therapy, it's time to give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash circling today to get 10% off of your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash circling. Can we talk radioactive rhinos? I've been wanting to. I didn't preface Dylan with this because I found it right before we started recording. Um, but anytime you see radioactive rhinos on the TL, you kind of got to dip in a little bit. Is that why that one was carried off by the helicopter or whatever it was? Dude, that's a straight up movie. Did you see that? Yeah, dude. That thing was just chilling. It was fun. Like, how, how nice would it be to just get like someone to attach that to you and just whisk you away? How confused was that rhino when he's getting carried away by a chopper? Like, what does, it so what does like, he sound like as he starts getting lifted up? Had to be unconscious. What do rhinos sound like? They just grunt and shit. Hey, Dylan. <laughs> they speak English? No, I was thinking of rhino. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh our friend rhino. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. I like it. South African scientists on Tuesday injected radioactive material into live rhino horns to make them easier to detect at border posts in a pioneering project aimed at curbing poaching. Um. So this is just for like identification purposes. Oh, I kind of want them to grow like horns out of their back and stuff. I kind of want them that, to look that's like a, that's a scary creature. I want them to look like a horns. brontosaurus. Uh, it's already pretty dino-like, you know. D Dylan, do you have any takes about how you could like wrestle a rhino or wrangle one? <sighs> um, here we go. They're pretty uh, gentle giants, aren't they? They don't think they're not aggressive, are they? I, I, well, hippos are sneaky aggressive as hell. I don't even think it's sneaky. I think they'll just straight fuck you up. No, but like people look at hippos and they're like, oh, they're all round and they fat. Look cute. They're cute. No, they'll, rhino is, they'll is crush the, your skull in two seconds. I think a rhino is the friendly version of the hippo. Sometimes I'll just vibe out and watch uh, hippos eat watermelons for like an hour. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They crush those things. That's kind of that's my mental health. That's my uh, therapy. They swim very fast, turns out, too. <laughs> yeah. Can I read you guys some facts about rhinos that you might not have known? Yes. yes, there are five species of rhinoceros. You guys want to take a stab at any of these species and what they are? White rhino is one of them. Got it. Black rhino. Got it. Uh, I, that's all I know. They have the Indian rhino. Okay. They have the Havan rhino. Mm. I don't know. And the Sumatran rhino. Which is the one that there are like three left of? I don't know. Most. And like they're protected like round the clock by like armed security. That's that northern white. Oh, for real? Mm-hmm. Okay. You like that south of the border white though, right? I don't know what that means. Uh, they can range from 1,000 to 5,000 pounds. That's pretty big. That's pretty big, large. It's a big range. Uh, they have two horns on their snouts, except the Indian rhino, which typically only has one horn. And rhino's horns are made of keratin, the same material as human hair and nails. How about that? So do they trim them? I don't think so. Do they man. get like, huh. do they get it like done? Do they have like a little like... The rhino salon? Do they, yeah, is? do they have like a little rhino that walks around with a little kit and like does their... I don't know for sure, but I would guess that, that no, they, they okay. don't. Yeah. Okay. They've got bigger issues. Like what? Extinction? People who just cut off their horns to sell them for wellness. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's trying to fuck with rhinos all the time. Leave them alone, man. Why do they want... Why, do they fu why are they fucking with rhinos though? I, th I think... It's the horn. It's the horn. But like, what do they do with the horn? Sell them on the black market. They but have why? unproven powerful medicinal properties. At one point, they were more expensive than cocaine in Vietnam. It's kind of a little fun fact that I just knew and I didn't don't, read. I don't really get the feeling that cocaine is that expensive in Vietnam. Like, don't I, get caught with cocaine in Vietnam. Why? why? I, I feel like it's not a good punishment. I mean, it's a felony here. You can imagine in Vietnam, probably. Yeah, I I'm not familiar with their laws there. Yeah, it's well, not, he's talking not directly great. to you. 
I am. This is more of like a me and you. Am I going to Viet- Vietnam? Nor am I going to do coke. Okay. Imagine if they injected the rhino with like a bunch of radioactive shit in his nose, and he was just saw a pile of cocaine. He's doing that cocaine. They're just dusting it. It's like, what does it matter at this point? I have radioactive shit in he's, my snout. He's just downstairs at Boss Bar, just going crazy. Just going nuts with you a gotta, bunch of Irish dudes. There's nothing that bouncer can do. How pissed would you rhino. be if you were in the stall with your like three boys and this rhino comes up? He's like, dude, can I get in that bag? Oh, you're not seeing that bag again. That bag's gone. You're like, dude, you can't even fit in the stall. You're being mega yeah, fucking sus big, right now. Too big for those stalls. The, rhino, like, the rhino's like, the, like every 25 minutes, like, hey, you got that bag? Got that bag? Yeah, dude. dude you took the fucking bag. Dude, where's the bag? <laughs> you, you, you did all it all. It. Where's the bag? <laughs> Can I hit your Benjamin, bro? He said, hey, let's run back to the uh, hotel real quick. Let's just go real quick. <laughs> this is a rhino doing cocaine that we're talking about here. Hey, we got to go. Let's go back. Let's just go back. Uh, let's go back. I got my Bluetooth speaker. We'll hook it up. I'll hook it up to my phone. Mm-hmm. We can listen to Zach Bryan. Mm-hmm. I won't talk to you about this business idea I got. This rhino's doing a lot. It's radioactive. It's an rhino annoying horns. rhino. No, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's dude, pretty I'll good. cut my own rhino horn off. Let's get the fuck out of this. Boy's dude, what dead if anymore. what if we sold my rhino horn right now for another bag? <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. Uh, Dylan, I'd like you to answer for something. Oh, what I do? Why did Texas join the SEC with a, a pit bull concert? I've been confused about that myself. Like, I don't know. I know he's a big draw for a lot of people, but it seems weird for a, a for Texas. Yeah. He this doesn't scream SEC. This isn't Miami. Yeah, like he's trying to put on a show. I, again, I have no problem with it. I just don't quite understand. Oh, I, I'm not one to like rain on a on a pit bull concert. Who's the Who's the ideal University of Texas musician to get? You Pat think, Green. You would think they would get some kind of country artist? Yeah, Pat, Pat Green's Green, not dude. big enough. I mean, after A and M just just did George Strait. That would, oh, yeah, been, that would got have been perfect. Pitbull for a, fr- a free campus performance. What's George Strait really going to stop playing shows? Not saying he needs to, but he's he's been p- every five years. My last show. This is it, and it's never his last show. He's doing bigger shows. Does he get radio play these days? Like his new songs? I don't know. I don't think so. I saw him complaining that he wouldn't get played on the radio. And it's like my brother. You're doing okay. Hold He's on, got like, many number you're ones. The king 50, of, 50, you're the over king 50 of like an old uh, an old man talking about how they're not how they're being deplatformed. Kind of. Yeah, I don't I'm, I don't know why why they got oh well uh well apparently it was a why. nightmare. Really? Apparently it was real busy on that campus. You don't you don't just have Pitbull out there and not expect it to get out of control. The 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 crowd shots that I saw, it was an impressive turnout. They sent a, they sent like a notification on the Citizen app being like there's a possible stampede situation of people. It was rhinos. Never yeah, it was a bunch of rhinos that had just been injected with pink cocaine. And Will was popping out of their butt. Mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like the those things didn't happen. No, nah, I was at home with my kids. I didn't actually go to the Pitbull concert. On a really hot, ass. on a really hot day too. Dude, the rhino snorted me. This, just, Will got sucked up with the nostril. Yeah, he snorted me and pooped me out. Bro, you got that bag of Will. Where's that Will bag? In this joke, Will's the cocaine. All right, we're still doing the okay. Yeah, we are. Keep this is going. me getting snorted up. <laughs> okay, dude, just straight to the dome, right into that little rhino septum. Mm-hmm. Wow. Right into that little sinus cavity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, was it during the day? The people. It was all day long. That's a terrible idea. You can't hot do as, that. Hot I hope it's free water. Crap. Hey, people Knowing are Texas, excited, they were man. probably selling for like eight dollars. Dude, a I, saw, I, I watched some of the Schlossnagel interview. He Which was one? just glazing Chris Del Conte. Oh, I saw some of that too. Glazing yeah. our man up. Hey, shout out to Chris Del Content, who was at. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, to call thing. her. Dude, there's too many backers to name. I'm trying to think who they who they should have gotten instead of Pitbull. It should have been country music. You're right. Yeah, but who? I mean, you can't get George Strait. Who Travis you go Tritt. For? Oh, yeah, I feel like not Travis Tritt. Just, it, I'm kind of surprised that there aren't any like major country acts that like went to UT and got super famous. Unless there's someone I'm just totally blanking they on. Went to UT. Yeah, they should have got Glenn Powell up there just to like take his shirt off. Just be like, hey, what's up, man? We're going to the SEC. And they're like, all right, what else you got, Glenn? He's like, I'm not you a lot. You got three hours to fill here, Glenn. What else? You guys you seen do? my latest movie, Hitman? You yeah. should check out this other one I did like five or six years ago, maybe eight. It's about baseball, but, but not really. But it's not. It's a baseball movie, but it's about the team. It's not really a, a you know a baseball movie per se. You're such a bitch for not liking that movie. He's Mr. You really are, man. You just don't. That's your thing. You don't like the camaraderie of the team. You're a, you're a, you're a selfish player. There wasn't, you're not a, a there wasn't much guy. camaraderie. You're a rod. 
You're the A-Rod of this thing. I heard Dylan requested to be DH in high school because he didn't want to work out with the rest of the team and stuff. He just wanted to hit hit dingers and not talk to anybody. I was moved to DH after I dropped a crucial fly ball in the outfield. <laughs> Which I lost in the lights. Was part of you was story. part of you like kind of relieved that you only had to worry about hitting? It was fun, but I I felt like I was not being utilized. Like if man, you, all right. But if you were like big poppy and you were just DH for like years on end, that would be great. No, it's it's a That's good a job game. if you can if you can get it. You don't have to worry about anything in the field. You just hitting. That's it, man. Dude, I'm more of a designated drinker. First team all district. I'm first team all fucking drinking. First team all district. You hear this fucker is drinking. First team. No Vortex bottles in Chicago. Didn't see a single one. Oh, did talk to somebody about that. Did you talk to that listener? Nah. He said he thought he might be able to find you one. He That's procured me one? I don't know his name. I would like to Shout get more than him. one so I can drink one and have one that I can keep forever. I also think that there's a way that I could figure out like a funnel situation where I could just start pouring beers into my Vortex bottle. What if, they, what if uh, the Rhino trade, they had to replace... Uh, you could take the horn of the rhino, mm -hmm. but you had to replace it with a vortex bottle. Okay. So you have vortex rhino. Do you have to replace it like your Indiana Jones? Like like he's putting the thing back mm -hmm. on? Um, yeah. Yeah, you do. Have you seen the video of Katie Ledecky swimming in the pool with a glass of water on her head? No. Uh, no. It's, it's one of the most amazing physical feats I've ever seen in my entire life. She gets in the pool, puts a glass of water on top of her head, and then just does freestyle to the end of the pool, and the glass never moves. Dude, she wins her races by like 30 seconds. She's unbelievable. She's one of the goats of all time. Absolutely. The goat of all time. One of the goats of all time. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> one of the goats of all time. Where do I find this video of the water? And it's hard to say. Probably the internet. Dude, yeah. she's a goat at all time swimmer. Yeah. I mean, where does swimming rank for you guys in the Olympics? Uh, you know what uh, if you have a name like phelps or ledecky i'm I'm in it's up there i'm not gonna watch a bunch of no names but... i like that the relay teams actively talk shit to each other like i like that they hate each other it makes it so much better to watch it helps that u.s video. is usually really good at the swimming it does yeah. it does yeah yeah oh wanna... dave's dave's watching live right a lot now, of longhorns dude. on those olympic teams did dave you're and dave's a swim boy dave went through dave went through a swim phase i did and i think it was what ended up hurting my shoulder but why didn't did, you do did. this well, this, is, this is quite impressive. Are you like, is that not amazing? Yeah, this is cool. I don't have the neck strength to do that. I don't have the posture to do that. I, I feel like it's not the neck that's the issue. Your neck's strong enough to hold No, it. but if you have a neck, if you have the neck strength, you can just hold your head in that position without even flinching. Her neck is way stronger than mine. I'd like to see her hit a pencil with that thing. I'd like her to see it hit Benjamin with that thing. I don't know what you're saying. Hey, a lot of people in Chicago. You haven't seen this? Hey, What's a Benjamin? You don't know a Benjamin? Randy, will you explain this to the olds in the room? <laughs> a Benjamin is just simply just a vape pen. Usually usually a weed one. You just call it the Benjamin. Okay. People have been calling it the Benjamin. Hey, people in Chicago, downtown specifically, a lot of, lot of just outdoor weed smoking. Hey, you it's really- sm So much weed. Dave, it's not just that though. The dispensary is reeked on the streets. Like if you stood in oh. front of one, it was like you, you got a contact high. It was amazing. I was very impressed. Was I didn't know weed was legal in Illinois. Very much so, apparently. Were you bummed we didn't see Michael Jordan? I, you know, I really didn't have any plans on seeing Michael Jordan. I thought we were going to see Mike. No, I'd rather see Urlacher at this point. He was on every billboard. He was. Shout out to his hairline. Well, this is an impressive video. I, I, I recommend. You're welcome. This video from 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's old. All right. That's all she wrote. What all a time. Right. Thank you to everyone who came out to yes. Chicago. You we guys are blast. awesome. We love you and we appreciate you. Can I make a bold claim? I think this was, this was the most enjoyable meetup uh we've ever had solid group of people like man. it was the appropriate amount of people the vibe was right air conditioning it's just a great time can't wait to do it again new york you're in our crosshairs we'll be in touch about that soon yes we will bye